everybody. Camila Forbes here from the Apollo. Excited to be talking with you today. Um, and actually, I, I, I want to keep this brief because I'm super like want to get into this conversation with uh, one of my favorite artists. Um, there are two words that come to mind when I think of him. It is timeless and timely. Um, a celebrated musician um, that combines, recreates, redefines, breaking notions, breaks boundaries um, and has won a numerous of best of awards. Um, and so I am so thrilled to talk to him about creativity, art, life, and music. And that is Mr. Kamasi Washington. Welcome, Kamasi. Glad to be here. <laughs> hey, hey. Here we go. <laughs> Dialing in from both coasts. So you're dialing in Kamasi from uh, from Los Angeles, is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm in LA. I'm in it's sunny. a nice weather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't want to rub it in, but yeah, it's, it's definitely. I know, I know. It's a beautiful day. I won't I won't okay. shine a camera on it, but <laughs> <laughs> I could I could see the glow. I see the glow just just floating on in, floating on in. Well, well, Kamasi, I mean, you know, we are so thrilled, always blessed to, um, number one, to have you in the digital space of the Apollo, um, even more blessed when you're in the physical space of the Apollo. Um, so we are uh, always honored and honored um, that you are our master artist in residence. And so um, super thrilled, super thrilled to have you in our orbit and to be in your orbit. So thank you for that. Um, you know, when I think about the Apollo and you, uh, you know, most recently, there was a, well, most recently before the pandemic <laughs> of, of in 2019, you recorded a concert film live at the Apollo Theater. And so, but beyond that film or before that film, I want to ask you, what is one of your maybe favorite experiences or memories of the Apollo Theater? Um, I mean, I mean, definitely, um, you know, the first time I heard that, that James Brown live at the Apollo, you know, I wasn't there, obviously, but <laughs> I felt like I was there. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, that was a, you know, that was, that was, that was that's a record that always kind of had a big impact on me, um, not only musically, but also just in, you know, when I learned the history of it and how, you know, he took that moment and kind of made it more than just a concert, you know, that was, um, yeah, it was very inspirational for me just, and just, you know, how I've gone about trying to, um, you know, kind of take that same approach in my own life, um, in my own career. Um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that, that probably would be the, like the, 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 that record, for sure, is like uh -huh. the one that, like made me kind of. Uh -huh. like, you know. I mean, and then after that, you know, there's the, there's a long. <laughs> sure, sure. But I wish I was there sure. for. <laughs> so a lot of my memories of Apollo are are kind of uh, 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 through through the uh, through the powers that that transcend time and space, mm. you know, <laughs> mm. with the uh, mm. recorded technologies. Um, yeah. You know, just being from LA and, and, and being born 
a little bit later than a lot of it. <laughs> no, so for, sure. for sure, for sure. I mean, I you know, I mean, look, that album was an iconic, um, iconic album, and I love what you said, and that he made so much of a moment out of uh, out of that, um, um, not out of that album, but really the moment and, and combining the moment in time. And 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 quite frankly, um, Kamasi, I think you you really walk in those footsteps in that. Right. Um, in that, you know, your, your albums to me never feel, you know, uh, just as an album. It feels like a world. Um, it feels like a pedagogy that we're all swimming in. Um, and so I um, so that's so fascinating to kind of hear that being one of your inspirations. But I also you had told me at one point uh, another time you played at the Apollo, one of the early times you played at the Apollo. Uh, so you played a few 2019. Yeah. Back when I was playing with Snoop, we played at the Apollo. <laughs> and I, we were trying to figure out exactly what that date was. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I still haven't quite figured it out. <laughs> I love it. See, but yeah, that was the first time right I played there. the Apollo was with Snoop and Snoop. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. See, that, that, that's so L.A. That's so L.A., <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> because and, and I love that because, you know, I when I think about um, when I think about you and your artist community around you um, and how much of it is rooted in you and your experience of Los Angeles. And, 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 and I'm just curious, like, what, what is that? Um, where do you what are, if you could talk a little bit about what influences you and the experience of your work and how how Los Angeles right and the artists around you in that ecosystem has really inspired you know inspired your creativity yeah I mean you know I mean the powers obviously in, in Harlem and in, in New York and, you know that's such an iconic city and that city kind of has so much energy and, and kind of uh, momentum to it and, and, and Los Angeles is, is similar to that um, and for me, you know, kind of going out in South Central LA, and like, you know, like our our Harlem is, is called Lamar Park, <laughs> and uh, you know, it doesn't, that definitely doesn't have the same history as Harlem Harlem, but it, it's similar in that like it was always a hub for um, people in the African American community to kind of be creative. Um, you know, we had people like Horace Taps Guy and Gerald Wilson, and uh, uh, you know. Just, just a number of you know Billy Higgins, uh, Kamal Dau, just these mm -hmm. figures that 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 kind of made the history of music, the history of in particular jazz, but even beyond jazz, it made it accessible to us. It made it feel like we were a part of it, not just bystanders kind of looking at it. And um, you know, coming up in LA, um, and then the fact that like you know in LA for whatever reason. You know, all different styles of music kind of end up converging in, in, in this kind of interesting way, and in particular in that area where, where I grew up, you know, in North Park. and it was like, so you had gospel musicians, you had rappers, you had poets, you had jazz musicians, you had R and B, you had, I mean, funk. Everything was kind of all happening in this one little, you know, two block. Well, not even two block. It's really like it's like a street. <laughs> I mean, there's like maybe like two streets, you know, it's like a T shape, you know. Um, <laughs> and right in that little space, you just have so much music happening. And, you know, me growing up around there, it kind of made me, you know, develop a respect and a, and a, and a, and a, and a reverence for all music. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that that definitely shaped, you know, me in the future, like you know, me in the present, and how I like, and how I approach music, and how it's, it's kind of wide open, you know, because that's kind of how I grew up. It, it was always wide open. There's no limitation. <laughs> You, you said something really interesting, you know, I mean, that's 
it's fascinating to hear because I, you know, I, I feel a lot of those influences, um, you know, in your work. And if you, how do you describe your approach to music? If there was a way to describe, like what, what becomes your first instinct, your first way in, you know, is it an idea? Is it a feeling? Is it a, I mean, yeah. what, 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 yeah, curious. I mean, if I was going to put, put my approach to music, and that's hard because, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a tall tree with a lot of branches. <laughs> but, um, I would say the root of my approach and, and the approach I believe of, of most of the, of the musicians coming in my circle, and it, and it sounds like it may be obvious, but it, it, it's surprisingly not, is that um, we let the music itself be the leader always. Mm. The captain of the ship mm. is the music. You know, like my, my friend mm. always says, the biggest ego in the room has to be the music mm. itself, you know, and so, uh, you know, as you, as a musician, you know, uh, we study, and we, uh, we learn things, and we practice, and, you know, sometimes, you know, and we have our own goals and dreams, you know, things like that, like seeing great records, like, you know, Live at Apollo, that kind of make you sometimes want to want to push the art to the direction that you want it to go. But ultimately, you know, music happens in a moment, and... Approach that no matter what, always give in to the moment of the music. You know, give in to the, and the music doesn't really give, doesn't usually expose its kind of its will until you get into the moment. <laughs> mm. That's the weird thing. Mm. Like, so to, so you have to have, kind of have this mentality of you can rehearse and practice and all those other things, mm -hmm. but ultimately, mm. you know, that's a very particular, you know, um, it's a very particular philosophy to take. Because, Absolutely. You know, it's not the philosophy that lives, lends itself so much to being uh, prepared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, prepared for the, yeah. for the unknown, you know, and yeah. Yeah. Be comfortable yeah. With, with the music moving and, and, you know, what you may have thought you wanted it to be, be okay with it being something else. So that, I mean, I would say that if that was a root to like ultimately all the different things that you can kind of call my musical approach, the root of it is that. Well, that is a that is a mighty tree right there, right? <laughs> you talk about? I mean, I mean, and it's it's funny as you say that, you know. The, as I hear you talk, it it sounds very spiritual, no? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and music is a is a spiritual, you know, endeavor. I, mean, I feel like, you know, I, mean, I believe in spirits, and I believe that we have soul, and, and mm -hmm. I do believe that your spirit and your soul is is involved in the creation of music. You know, it's yeah. involved in the way yeah. that you feel music. You know, yeah, it's the reason why you know you may like this music or that music, but very rare to meet someone who just doesn't like music. I mm. mean, you know, I can't say that no one exists, but if I was a betting man, I'd bet that no one exists. <laughs> does not like music, you know, because I thought like it's, it's such yeah. a fundamental human thing, you know, and and when you're making music, you know, when you Especially if you kind of like, you know, with our, with my philosophy or our philosophy, when you're giving into it, you can feel it kind of tapping into your spirit. 
and it mm. and it feels like it's it's coming through you mm -hmm. a little bit more than it's coming from you. You know, and mm -hmm. like spirit, that connection that spirit has with the with the infinite is mm -hmm. is definitely like how you get I me, mean, how I get to the, to the best. You know, yeah, all, all the theory and the practicing the scale and the, you know patterns and all those things are cool but that real the real 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 it comes from the spirit and yeah they're just kind of getting it from some other even greater place mm. so yeah wow That's why you gotta give into it <laughs> that's it wow like a, a real a real moment of surrender it you know it, it also you know as you as you're talking um you know i think about you're also speaking to sort of your, your improvisational style right it's so funny when people talk about um whether it's jazz hip-hop or improvisation in either one um that it is you're just making it happen on the spot but there's so much preparation that leads to that moment of then surrender so that you can fly right um but I'm just so curious about how you, um, do you know that it, it, your improvisational style, do, does that carry through with all of your compositions as you're working with your album, as you're working with your band, as you work with a film score? Um, because you work in so many different mediums, across so many different mediums. Um, so is that same approach of the way in consistent or do you tweak? For each yeah. for each world, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, the the, the, the that philosophy is throughout all of it. Um, the, the the manifestation of that philosophy differs in, in, in some regard. You know, um, the the idea of like you know jazz and we, we call it improvisation um, at the highest level, and, and this is the level that I'm talking about when you get into the music. When we were speaking about improvisation, the only difference between playing, the only difference between improvised music and music that's pre written is that you're writing it in that moment. Right. You know, so, right. So, right. music is happening, you're hearing it, and you're, you're going to write your part, which is at that point, usually the lead part, you're going to write it in that moment. And so, and I don't mean write it as you write it down. You're going to compose it in that moment. Yeah. And so, you know, when we think of jazz, that's kind of the that's a tradition of jazz is to come, yeah. have music happening around you, surrender to it, and compose a section of it in the moment, right there, as the music happens. This year, um, this particular year, the Apollo are continuing with the theme, the Renaissance is now. And, and part of that is really trying to underscore the importance of this moment, of uh, this moment of birth, this moment of create, Black creativity and expression, um, which is one of the reasons why we're extremely excited about, you know, your residency, um, you know, and you, so hearing you talk about your philosophy, your approach um, to creating art and, and recording, creating, whether it's jazz, whether it's orchestral, all expressions of art, 
or art literature and art installations as companions to your music is, is, is really exciting, right? Because I think about Renaissance, like it is this idea of convergence of worlds and ecosystem. Um, and, and, and so like seeing how you pull all of your worlds and ecosystem together is something of inspiration. And so I also wondered, you know, how do you, if you could talk a little bit about your, your how you envision your albums as their own worlds or ecosystems? Yeah. Um... So yeah, so, so for me, it's like you know, creating an album is almost like it's like uh, you watch you know like Star Trek or something like that, where you you're like drifting out, you're like going in space, and you don't really know where you're gonna land. You know you're going somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you kind of know where you're going, but you don't know what you're gonna get once you get there. You know? yeah. And then you know, once again, like the, the, the idea of recording music is even more so. It's very it's, it's it's in line with the idea of writing music up on the page. Because what we're going to do, what you're doing there, is you're capturing a moment that you can then share with someone. And so, you know, when I go in the studio to, to work on an album, you know, I used to come in with, and I'm always writing music, so I used to come in with a whole bunch of songs. <laughs> That's probably why my albums are so long. <laughs> um. I used to have more songs than I would want to put on the record. Um, yeah. And and we just start exploring. And at some point in those explorations, you know, a kind of story will will, will manifest itself. A, a, yeah. a musical pain or, or a, a vision will kind of come out of yeah. it. And sometimes it happens really early on and it's like, oh, okay, that's this is about to be. And sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it takes all the way to the end to really figure out, well, what is this? You know, sometimes you have to like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like with the epic, it's like that I have so much music. I have to kind of sift through it to kind of figure out what this is. Oh, 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 these things, this is this is one uh -huh. thing. Oh, uh -huh. this thing okay, well, now let me just focus on this. And then once again, it's like, you know, you have these moments and you're trying to, you're trying to um, mold them to the moments that they could be, you know? And so, right, right, right. You know, so for all my albums, you know, for, 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 for me, like when I, when I record, it's, it's about trying to, to find the story. <laughs> You're expanding your relationship with the Apollo. Um, now is our second ever Master Artist in Residence following our inaugural Master Artist in Residence, Mr. ta Coates. Now, but what it does for those out there who are listening who don't know, the residency provides um, uh, leading artists of color with a home to create new works, develop, curate programs, um, uh, while the institution support artists across all disciplines, you know, and therefore we serve as the artistic um, educational and community resource. And I know we've been jamming on a bunch of stuff, or at least I should say, I've been listening to you who jam on a bunch of stuff and ideas. But maybe I would love if you share um, about what excites you most about um, this opportunity with the, as, with the Apollo and uh, as artists in residence. I mean, well, first, I mean, it's, it's just like, it's an honor to, to be a part of that. Like, to, to feel like I'm you know, connected to to that and to that history and to that community and to that you know to that story, you know, it's, it's, it's just beautiful to me right there. 
but you know, the idea of a residency, residency is the idea of you know, having a space um, where I could do things that were a bit more involved than just than, than, than maybe I, like a, a concert or a show. Would be, you know? Yeah, that's like a moment in time. You know, a concert yeah. is like okay, in this moment, we're going to yeah. create music. For this, you know, hour and a half, two hours, and that's kind of what that is, you know. And um, you know, as a musician, you know, one thing I, I try to kind of do with my music is kind of tell a story. And so, you know, but the idea of kind of having a space that's a little bit more um, long lived is that mm-hmm. I can really tell a story, <laughs> maybe even literally. <laughs> and so, mm-hmm. so I have ideas of things that I want to do. That may have been that may be a bit more um, that may be a bit more involved, you know. And so, yeah. you know, stories and some ideas, things that that will involve visuals and you know and and, and music, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then also being able to like do things like this, like like speak to other creative people, and people who yeah. have you know uh, you know uh, big imagination. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, well, you know, just as you're talking, I'm like, I'm so excited. I mean, y'all, y'all better get ready, everyone who's listening, because I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, um, and and one thing. Well, let me ask you also this: Who are you listening to? Hmm. Who are you jamming on? Who are who are? Uh, yeah, who are the artists that we should be looking out for? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um. I've been listening to a lot of a lot, a lot of stuff lately. Um, um, let's see, I can pull it up right now. <laughs> I mean, let me not yeah. make it up and just tell you exactly who am I living listening to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, uh, you know, obviously my friends are always dropping the like this right now. And Terrace Martin, with a lot of amazing records, um, drones, and um, uh, uh, let's see what's like that. Just looking actually at my phone. <laughs> I go look at my records right now. I go, what are you really want to do? You know I mean? Real time. Um, That's real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kenny Garrett put out a new record I've listened to a lot. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I've been kind of on a Rasan Rowan Kirk tip lately. I'm just looking right now, like, yeah, I'm okay. Gonna do that. yeah. Okay, um, okay, okay. Uh, it's a song called uh, Say a Little Prayer, where he took, you know, uh, when I wake up, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. That. That's that's me kind of like. Oh, um, okay. Um, we might need to drop some of these links and. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh I yeah. Feel oh like yeah. We oh yeah. To, we might need to do that. Tag some of these links so folks can have a little that's, playlist. That's called Domino. Rowan Kirk. In case y'all want to. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I've also been kind of on the classical too. I've been listening to a lot of like Stravinsky. Um, okay. And then um, um, uh, oh, film music. Um, there's a there's a score. There's this. <laughs> it's gonna sound random, but this is. I don't know if you're in the Godzilla. There's, there's there's a version of Godzilla called Shin Godzilla, and there's an amazing score. That's like that. Interesting. Well, when, when, whoa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm and out there. I, I don't, <laughs> no. Well, what I love about it, once again, is because, you know, you score films, you make films, you make animated films. So, and just hearing your influences, they don't just sit in one, they, they sit in so many different places. You're pulling from such a wide well, which, um, you know, I, I, I think we can all sort of glean from, you know, there's so many times when folks just sort of sit in their own genre and, and that is the only lane <laughs> into which they operate, but um, but I just love the expansiveness and the, and the way you talk about it. Thank you for your time. Um, because I'm excited. Um, I'm ex- thankful for this conversation. I've, I mean, I've, I want to. I want to go create something now. You know, <laughs> my, my my ministry is not music, right? I I really I, I deal with, but but storytelling nonetheless. Yes. Um, 
and and what you said about music and and that magic happening in the moment only if you surrender is is inspiring so I just want to say thank you, Kamasi. We're excited. We're honored uh, to have you. Welcome to your new home, the Apollo. Um, Kamasi, you are past and future all at once. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I I, really do appreciate that. So. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I feel like I'm excited. I feel like this is, this is an opportunity to, like I said, to, 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 to go further. You know? That's it. And that's you know that's what we're all you know trying to do is is to kind of try to reach as far as we can um, while we have with the time that we have. You know, that's, that's right. That's kind of the best any of us can do. You know, um, and so yeah, I'm so thankful for you guys for, for, for kind of opening your space and opening your your energy and your hearts and, and, and your and, and your life to me. And uh, I, I, I promise I'll do my best to, to do something. Beautiful. Oh, no doubt, of course, because hello. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and it's. I love that we we um we we opened talking about James Brown, and it reminds me of an Octavia Butler quote. Quote: um, There is um, nothing new under the sun, but there are new suns. And uh, yes, shine on, brother. Shine yeah. on. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Cool. Thank you, Kamasi. Oh, thank you.